In this video, we are going to explain the importance of the immunological memory in the elimination of infectious agents. Let's start with a small introduction. At birth, an individual has his own B and T lymphocytes. He has a repertoire of different B and T lymphocytes. It's the immunological phenotype. The immunological phenotype characterizes the ability of the individual to respond to the various infectious agents he may encounter in his environment during the lifetime. Specific immunity establishes a state of long-term resistance against an antigen already encountered. It's the immunological memory. So, we are going to see the importance of the immunological memory that confers a long-term resistance against infectious agents. The problems to be solved are, what are the mechanisms that allow the body to remember a first contact with an antigen? What are the characteristics of the immunological memory? How can the immunological memory be used to prevent diseases or to protect against a pathogen. And finally, how does the immunological phenotype evolve during lifetime? The specific immune response, whether it is a humoral or, or cell mediated, comprises two responses, a primary one and a secondary one characterized by the immunological memory. The primary response is triggered following the first contact with an antigen. And the effectors of this primary response are naive lymphocytes that will fight the antigen for the first time. Now, if this same antigen enters the body again, so the memory lymphocytes will fight this antigen during the secondary immune response. The secondary immune response is triggered following the subsequent encounters with the same antigen. We have already memory lymphocytes produced during the primary response and these memory lymphocytes will trigger the secondary immune response. Now, what are the characteristics of primary and secondary immune responses? The document illustrates the time course of the primary and secondary immune responses against tetanus toxin. So, we uh, took the example of tetanus toxin. And the question is, interpret the results of the experiments. We have a rabbit injected with tetanus toxin and another rabbit injected with tetanus toxoid than with tetanus toxin. Knowing that tetanus toxoid is the attenuated form of tetanus toxin. It's an attenuated toxin uh, that has lost its uh, pathogenic effect but still has what uh, its antigenic effect or epitopes. Interpret, analyze, then give a significance to the results. For the interpretation, the rabbit injected with tetanus toxin dies and there is absence of antibodies secretion in its serum. This indicates what? This indicates that tetanus toxin is fatal. It causes the death of the animal. However, in the second experiment, the rabbit, having received tetanus toxoid, the attenuated form of tetanus toxin, survives and begins to produce antibodies. The level of antibodies start increasing after week one following the injection and reaches a maximum of one arbitrary unit uh, in two weeks, then the level of antibodies decreases 
to become null at week 4. This indicates that the injection of tetanus toxoid triggers an immune response in the rabbit characterized by the production of a small amount of antibodies and this production is not durable. It doesn't persist. However, this same rabbit, six months later, following the injection of tetanus toxin, it survives and the level of antibodies increases rapidly starting from day one following the injection to reach a maximum of three arbitrary unit, which is higher than that observed during the primary response to tetanus toxoid. Then the level of antibodies decreases slowly and remains constant around two arbitrary units for many weeks. So this indicates what? This indicates that tetanus toxoid protects the rabbit, immunizes the rabbit against the fatal tetanus toxin by triggering an immune response which is amplified, which is important and more durable, more persistent. So what are the characteristics characteristics of the secondary immune response observed here in the experiment two. The characteristics are the immune, the secondary immune response is more rapid, more intense or more amplified and more persistent or durable. This graph shows also the characteristics of primary and secondary responses concerning the humoral response following the first infection with the antigen the naive b cells will be will activate will act they are differentiated into plasma cells the plasma cells secrete antibodies that neutralize the pathogen or the antigen now the level of antibodies decreases and we have low level of antibodies. Now, uh, after the first infection, we have memory B lymphocytes produced. These memory B lymphocytes act on the second infection with the same antigen. These B lymphocytes, the memory B lymphocytes, differentiate and give a large number of plasma cells secreting antibodies. That's why the level of produced antibodies in the secondary response is higher, much higher than that produced in the primary response to the same antigen. Why? Because we have more B lymphocytes, more plasma cells, and thus more antibodies. And the level of antibodies decreases, but uh, remains high comparing to the level produced in the primary response. So the secondary immune response, it's the immunological memory. Also this graph shows, shows that when the body is exposed to the same antigen, for example here antigen A, it's the first injection of antigen A, and here we have the second injection of antigen A and a first injection of antigen B. As you can see, the secondary response to antigen A is more rapid and larger than that in the first case or than that uh, in the primary response. So the immune system calls for a more rapid and larger response to the antigen following its second entry to the body. What are the basis of the immunological memory? Memory cells are derived from the clonal selection and differentiation of naive T helper or cytotoxic T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes after contact with the antigen to which 
these cells are specific. And the memory cells are characterized by what? They are characterized by an earlier and higher activation capacity than the naive cells. That's why the secondary response is rapid. So uh, the latency time needed for the activation of memory lymphocytes is smaller or shorter than the latency time observed during the primary response following the first contact with the antigen. So here we have small amount of naive lymphocytes specific for the antigen that are activated and differentiated into memory cells and effector cells. Now, following the second contact with the same antigen, the memory cells produced during the primary response, they will differentiate into effector cells and memory cells. And as you can see here, uh, we have much more effector cells and memory cells during the secondary response. So we have a higher proliferation capacity than naive cells. And we have uh, a higher capacity for self-renewal, preservation of memory cells for many years. So we can say the secondary immune response is more rapid, more amplified, and more durable than the primary response. And thanks for listening. In the next video, we are going to explain uh, the immunological memory, the importance of vaccination in eliminating the intruders.